Alpine, heading 185, reduce speed 182 knots. 185 on the heading 180 on the speed go fair 007. Speed at 124, reduce speed 160 knots to 40 mean. Hi there guys, Matt here. I hope you're all well and welcome back to another P3D video. Now, I was kind of hoping I'd get an X-Plane video in between the last video and this one, but never mind, things happen. And uh, the reason for that is because uh, I kind of like to mix it up so we don't get the whole uh, argument of, you know, which platform is better. I, I definitely use both in an equal amount, but... Uh, I, uh, well, the last X-Plane video I tried to record, just it wasn't working out for me because I kept getting distracted doing other things. Um, so, we are back in P3D. More specifically, in a place called Cancun. Uh, this is some scenery that came out actually not too long ago. Pretty detailed. Uh, I've flown here a few times on stream, and uh, more specifically... Uh, just a couple of days ago, I flew here in this beast, which is the newly updated Quality Wings 787. Uh, it's now got PBR. That's why it looks so nice. This isn't any sort of like tomato shade reflection profile or anything like that. This is all uh, its own native PBR, PBR stuff even. Uh, but we flew down here to, uh, to Cancun from Gatwick. And uh, I was going to contract it back out on Project Fly. But instead, I figured, you know what? I will do an overnight return. So I will depart. I'll go to bed. And then I will uh, wake up and land it. So we are here on, uh, I think it's stand 35. Something like that. It's a Terminal 3 anyway in Cancun. And uh, it is uh, evening. Well, it's almost evening time for them. So uh, if we don't get a move on soon, then it will uh, be pretty dark. But um, long flight time. It's about 10 hours, 10 and a half hours, something like that. Uh, as far as I'm aware, and I'm going to double check now, the call sign is uh, Thompson 023. Or not Thompson, Tomjet 023. Uh, it's this one here. Departs at 2155, so we're about an hour late. But that means that I can wake up at like 7.30 a.m. instead of 6.30 a.m. Uh, so we'll choose this one. There it is. Tomjet 023 Thompson, TUI, whatever. They always change their call signs and their uh, voice call signs more specifically. So trying to keep up to date with it is actually quite annoying. Uh, we're in GTUIA, Golf Tango Uniform Indie Alpha. And you can see it's uh, it's already parked here at uh, Cancun. And we're going to uh, just, just, we're not going to bother with that. So we'll just go off uh, offline. Uh, so we will book and dispatch that and then we can head across to PFPX for now and we can have a look at getting a flight plan, getting some weights and uh, some fuel as well. That would be pretty useful. Okay, so you can already see I had BY22 from the other day. So I'm going to delete that because we don't need it. And... I'm going to put 0, 2, 3, or 2, 3, and then just change the call sign to zip. God damn it. T O M 0, 2, 3. M M U N Gatwick. Uh, we'll depart off 12 right. We'll land on 2, 6 left. And we will be taking T U I A. There it is. 7, 8, 7. Dash eight random payloads zero fuel weights 143.6, which is fine. Find the alternates, which should really be Heathrow or somewhere like Stansted or maybe Luton. They could probably take a 787. Uh, and then we'll find the route and we'll see what time that gives us once it's found that. Uh, so it's going to take estimated on route time 10 hours 50 minutes. Pretty impressive. E top scenario I don't know what they use on the 78. I'm just going to assume it's 180. Um, it's like standard twin engine. I, I, I actually don't know. Uh, but for our route, we can take St. John's and we can also take Shannon as well. And that should just about make it. Yeah, perfect. Right. Release the flight and print everything out. And then we shall get everything loaded into the sim 
and on our way. Okay, so into the flight deck. Um, we can just do a few things very quickly in the EFB over here. And one of them is set the weights. So dispatch. Uh, we are looking for a zero fuel weight of 143.6. So we can just click here, 143600. Um, and the fuel is going to be uh, 40, well, it says 44 tons. I'll take 46 tons. And then I can set the payload. And set the fuel tanks as well. And then that is us done. I'm going to do the performance in a bit. Okay. So the fuel's in 45 ton or 46 tons. That's all fine. Uh, we can go on the overhead panel. I uh, we turn on the uh, IRS's flight deck door power can go on. Uh, we can turn on the window heats and the seatbelt signs, logo light if you really care about it. Uh, packs to auto, fuel pumps can come on. There's fuel in the center. We can leave the hydraulics off for the moment. And then we can go down here and we can set up the flight plan. So. I already have a flight plan in the system, so I can just load it. Uh, here it is here, M-M-U-N-E-G-K-K, -K, route. Uh, runway, one, two, right, and Tomjet, zero, two, three. There's a flight number. Activate that, execute it. The departure, we will uh, grab in just a second. Actually, you know what, let's just go over to the charts because we're gonna need them. So, if I bring the charts up, uh, we our initial waypoint is out via Nukan. So if we go to SID, and then we look at the departures, oh the RNAV departures from runway one two right, Nukan is up this way. So it's a Nukan one alpha. And uh, is there any initial climbs? No, to just be uh, 5,000 feet or under at UN415, and that's the only thing. Um, yeah, that's it. Transition altitude is 11,000, sorry, 18,500 feet. And so, uh, it's a little bit different to the US, but whatever. Uh, just while we're here, let's just have a quick look at the airport info. So we're currently parked on Terminal 3, which is around this area here. Uh, we're departing from 12 right, so it's re really easy, straight pushback. Um, then we can go via Bravo, make our way onto Charlie, and then just up to Charlie 9. That seems like a reasonable plan. If we could actually look at the specific parking spots. If we could, we're... Uh, on one of these stands here, I think it's three eight or three nine, one of the one of, one of the two even. All right, that will do as far as charts. So, uh, depart arrive, uh, depart twelve right, and new can one alpha. Like I said, you can execute that, um, and then the init ref. The reserves on the flight plan are looking to be. 1.9 plus 1.1 plus 1.9 so let's just round that up so two four five we'll call it five and uh cruise altitude well i'm going to assume we're going to be step climbing uh actually only once only once that's a lie three times we're starting off at flight level 390 cost index 31 it's pretty low actually for a uh, for a long haul. Put that on the legs page, right? Um, yeah, we're starting off at three nine zero, going up to flight level four hundred on the nat track, and then once we get over the other side, uh, up to four two zero, and then uh, descending down back to four one zero. So we will copy FMC data. Condition is dry. Uh, everything else is fine. And uh, the thrust rating is just optimum. We can calculate that and we'll send the output. That's that. And we'll go over to the FMS and we will accept the output. If 
flat five. Uh, we could go next page and just make sure that's all in, which it is. Uh, thrust limb is set to 52, which is perfect. Uh, everything is good. So 151 is what we're looking at in the MCP. So we'll switch that to 151. Or we'll turn it to 151. Uh, there's no initial climb, but I'll just put that 5,000 restriction in, because why not? And then the runway heading for 12 right is 125. So I'm going to spin that all the way around. Like so. Uh, 125, right. So auto thr uh, throttle can arm. Flight directors left and right. L nav, V nav. You won't see that come on just yet, but it's fine. Uh, we'll cancel everything in between. And uh, we can put the auto brake to RTO. Now. In the new update, they have uh, allowed us to um, import active Skywinds, but because I'm running on a network PC, I haven't set my directory properly, so I can't do it. So we'll just pretend that we've already done that. I'm just going to put the transition altitude to the right thing. Speed restriction is fine. Uh, legs, let's have a look, 390. So where are we going to step? At a place called Suri, S-O-O-R-Y, is where we're going to go up to flight level 400 so 400 if I could type 400s like that and then uh, a bit further down the way at 30 west which is basically this one here uh, 420s and then at Zetbo Z Zetbo this one here 410 and we can execute that that's basically the flight planning done. And it's a relatively straightforward aircraft to program, really. I do want to do something, though. Um, the QW config uh, auto step climb is on. Perfect. Because I'll be asleep, so it's, uh, it's good that you can do that. All right, back to the CDU. We can have a look at the checklist pre flight. Ladies and gentlemen, from the very, very quick. And now you get some American doing announcements, even though I checked, don't do announcements. Pretty good. <laughs> I love how it says that. In the cabin today, some of our finest flight attendants, like all the other flights don't get them. It's just your one. Uh, VSD, uh, traffic, data, VORs, exit that. We put the weather on this side eventually, but I don't care just yet. Uh, this side, we can throw train, traffic, also traffic on that side. And we can put the VSD on and VOR left, right, data. And train's already on, that's fine. And we can zoom the range in a little bit. If we have the airport map on uh, or loaded, then we could see the ground layout, but we don't. So never mind. And that, my friends, is everything as far as I can see. Might some put some backlighting on a little bit just to change the contrast. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to turn this off. Power that down. Power that down. Uh, the before start checklist I care less about right now, but we'll just keep it up there for now. We'll go outside and we will... Um, basically tell GSX we're ready to push and start but before I do that I just need to fire on the APU so prepare for pushback and departure and it probably will um, tell us it's doing something so I'm just going to reset the position because I can't be bothered waiting for it it's not as if it's copying a payload across or something like that uh, we're going to go nose left tail right and we're not going to start the engines before pushback what we are going to do is close all the doors, like th uh, like so. Go outside, we should be able to see that. Now, I should be able to, um, I can't, so we're going to have to go through the SOD menu. Auto undock the jetways, there we go. And of course, that door still hasn't closed. Is it going to close now? Yes, there we go. Good day, Captain. Cool. Right, while that's happening, we need to go into Project Fly and kickstart the flight. So I will go paste the route, paste that, dispatch, 
and eventually I will get an option to press fly now. Fly now. There we go. Is, there, is, is it busy or something? Seems to be pretty slow to respond. Mm, 400, not really. There I am. I don't even have a picture set. Terrible of me. Right. Is the APU on? Yes, it is. We do not need the external power anymore. We can disconnect that. And we can do the beacon lights. We can pressurize our hydraulics. And the passenger signs are on. MCP is set. Takeoff speeds are set. Seat pre flight is complete. Briefing is uh, all sorted. And we can go back to the CDU. He's trying to brief me on something I really I don't understand why he's doing it. Right, okay. Harking brakes released. Pushing now. The aircraft is clear. Start engines at your discretion. The aircraft is clear. Alright, well. I learned a few things from the last video I did with this uh, 787. Um, I don't what this thing to each other. Okay, well, one of the things that I assumed is that the, um, the start sequence in a 787 is identical of a 777. Turns out that the bleed system is all electrical and it's nothing to do with anything else. So uh, you can actually start both engines at the same time. Now, I quite happen to enjoy the audio of the engine starting, so I like to do it one at a time. But there is nothing stopping you doing this and doing this, or clicking the other one as well, and doing them both at the same time. But I kind of, I kind of get a kick out of hearing each individual engine. So nice. Quality wing's got anything right, it's the wing bounce and the wing flex. It's so, so, so beautiful. Perfect. Alright, we'll fire the other one up. There they go. Both started. Push back to please. Set parking brake and confirm. Parking brake set. Don't know why it's so abrupt when it does that, but whatever. A couple of things that they changed in the update. The trim now is very rapid. It used to uh, take forever to trim up. Now it's pretty quick. It's not very nice. So while they're doing everything with the ground stuff, we can turn the APU off because it's uh, finished with. And we can put the flaps to five. And you can see them come down there. Now we can do a quick control check. See all the inner workings of the wing. Very nice, very nicely modeled. And then the pedals that seem to come way too far out, but whatever. Uh, and that's that. Run through the checklist. Anti-ice isn't required. Recall is checked. Oh, the emergency lights. That's why you do checklists. Uh, the emergency lights are at the top here. So I guess you just have to turn them on and then off again. Maybe. Okay, let's try that again. Nope. 
I mean, I can see it's armed, so whatever. Have a good flight. Well, let's assume recall is fine. Flight controls and ground equi uh, equipment is clear, and there's a before takeoff checklist as well. So we can go back to the CDU page. Turn on. I didn't mean to do that. Turn on the taxi light. Turn off lights. And once he has gone out the way, we will taxi. I wonder if I can make a left turn there. Uh, probably not a wise idea. Although he's going to take him so long to move. Yeah, I'm going to try it. I'm going to go full left hand. Oh, no, it, it, never mind. It just despawned. Beautiful. Right, bit of power. Goes a long way in these things. I've been on a 788 in real life and a 789 in real life. And you can really tell the difference as opposed to... Um, maybe we were just uh, different weights or something, but when the captain or whoever was taxiing the dash nine at Heathrow, um, it took a bit of a bit of power to get it moving. But when we were flying out of Manchester um, in the dash eight, uh, I was going to Chicago. Um, it just rolled like it's doing now. It just rolled by itself. It was, it was very very peculiar. But I still maintain that the 787, out of all of the aircraft that I've been in, the 787 is the smoothest ride. I don't know what that wing design is, but it is, it absorbs everything. You can see the wing bouncing around and, you know, you just can't feel anything in, inside the, like, even when it lands. When, when you know, the, the aircraft touches the runway, the, the, you don't get any abrupt um like bang is the suspension is spot on as well okay let's make this left turn here we'll just cross over onto taxiway bravo Head down to the bottom. Do I see a... Is that a 767 there? Oh, it must be some cargo aircraft. I have ultimate traffic on. I forgot about that. So that will be why. Ha! Huh. No way. The Corona beer is on the side of the tower. It's basically my favorite beer. Oh no, this isn't cargo. This is Air Canada Rouge. Must just be doing something in maintenance or something. And then this is all Aero Mexico or Aero Me Mexico. That's how they pronounce it. Oh, my Spanish is never very good. Seven six seven. Wait, is that a terminal here? Doesn't look like it. it. Looks like cargo. The plane is. Oh no, maybe it is a terminal because there's another aircraft at the side of it. We are going very fast. Well, twenty nine knots ground speed. Not that bad. No, it is. It's. Uh, it looks like a terminal. Weird. Turn the sound up a bit so I can hear the engines roar. That's all I care about. They got the sounds really nice in this aircraft. See the windsock doing its thing? The surface wind is uh, 080 degrees at 10 knots. Alright. So, we'll make sure the transponder's on, which it is. We will grab the lights, which they're on like so and we'll chime the cabin uh, 
and we will just take it rolling. Put the weather radar on. There's some traffic landing on one to uh, left. You can see a Montecas. It's all good. See if we can get a decent lineup. There you go. Swing it all the way around, like so. Spot on. Spot on. Oh, yeah, there you go. It is a United 737-900. Right, let's go. Power is coming in. You had it. Thrust is set. There's 80 knots. There is a V1. And a rotate. Pass the right and gear up. We are really light. Wow. And then it's like United. What a departure. LNAV is already in, VNAV speed's already in, we're about to go into the clouds. Visibility is not so good today. It's gonna accelerate. Nudge it to the left a little bit. There we go. Straighten her up. We can whack the autopilot, autopilot in. You can reset autopilot it to flight level 390 because there's no ATC or anything like that. Push it in uh, a few times just to clear the constraints. That looks so weird. It's like clipping through the. Uh, Clipping through the haze layer. Very strange. Looks really nice though. Okay, flap one. You can see the flaps go in. Ah, uh, we just actually throw the flaps up to be fair. We are now clean, making the left-hand turn, and that is the last we are going to see of land of any sort for the next probably nine hours. It is all land, oh, sorry, all water now, all the way. Which is, I guess, as far as scenery goes, is probably quite depressing, but... Yeah, that's it. There's no more. No more to be seen. A little bit there.
What a stunning looking aircraft. Turn the landing lights off. And the taxi lights off. And in a minute it will pitch forward and accelerate. Do the after takeoff checklist. It's all there. And then that's the approach checklist yet to come. There it is, pitching forward. Accelerating to 313 knots as per cost index 31. set standard now even though it's still quite a way off but we're going all the way up so I'm happy to do that and there we go one successful departure from Cancun next stop Gatwick Just approaching 7 hours and 50 minutes of flying time and uh, we just left the oceanic track and uh, actually if you look to the left uh, there's island, south island or should I say southern island uh, coming in to the UK through the uh, south western side. Uh, it says top of descent is uh, in about, I don't know, 100 and, -ish, 100 and something miles. But we've not programmed the arrival yet, so that may change. Happily sat at flight level 410, being pushed along by a mediocre tailwind, 20 knots. Well, it's not really 20, it's probably about 8 knots at that angle. So. We have a look at the flight plan. I found uh, that you can actually bind the key to chase plane now to make things go faster. So you're not spending hours trying to go at this speed around the cockpit on flight deck. Um, so last point for us, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, Southampton, Sierra Alpha Mike. So if we go over to the charts, which are here and uh, we'll look at the stars um, now I have a feeling it's going to be one of the willow arrivals there we go probably that one willow 3 alpha because uh, before that is Exmoor and none of them come from Exmoor so it will be the willow 3 alpha yeah because we're coming in through uh, through from from the the West Country, so 
That makes sense. Uh, we'll go three alpha and um, arrival runway is going to be on two six left. So we will have a look at the ILS for two six left. There's some funky transitions. I don't actually know if they ever use these in real life. I'm pretty sure they just vector them around, but um, the willow hold is weird spins in a very strange way you kind of go over a point to leave a point to then go into the hold there's a, there's a there's actually a technical term for it but i can't remember it uh okay so ils two six left minima is well 102 296 uh but to be honest that's for the cat two and cat three we're not going to be doing that so we'll just do cat one, so 396 is fine. Um, and the missed approach altitude is 3,000 feet. That's all I care about. Parking for us will be, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think of where we departed from on the outbound, but I can't actually remember. I think it is the north side up here, north terminal. So, with that in mind, we'll land on 26 left and then vacate either onto 26 right, 0 right left, or onto Taxiway Juliet. And then we'll go Juliet and I reckon Romeo. And then Quebec, or Romeo, Quebec, and then one of the top stands here. And that is about as interesting as the arrival gets, I'm afraid. So, depart arrive <clears throat> for the worst cough in history. Right. ILS, 2 6 left. Willow. Willow, 3 alpha. Execute. And just make sure that's gone in. So, the FAP. I don't know why it's put the FAP. Uh, as far as I'm aware, the FAP <laughs> is a final approach fix. Let's just get rid of that. Uh, so Goodwood Golf Whiskey Charlie flight level one three zero that's fine, and then Willow at not flight level four one zero because that wouldn't work out. Uh, so we'll replace that with that, but then we'll change this to uh, flight level eight zero. Don't know why it's trying to do a hundred and ninety knots. There you go. Uh, look at this. It's probably a VNAV meme. Yeah, it is. So if I change this to that, um, and then also I need to change the transition to six. Um, now hopefully that's fixed. The nah, it's still not fixed. It of course. These these restrictions are just balked, absolutely balked. So what I'll do is I'll just manually throw in a 250 over the top of that. Um, these can stay relatively low and do 230 there, 230 there, um, then that's about a base leg. So that can be 180 and then we'll eventually slow down. Uh, okay, <clears throat> now, it's going to be the video where you just hear me coughing for the entire arrival. I do not know why my throat is so broken. I just had some coffee and normally that like fixes everything, but apparently not. And before anyone asks, no, I don't smoke. Uh, copy FMC data. Let's get the arrival weather. So, 310 degrees, 9 knots is going to be that. Outside air temperature is 11. UNH is 1034. Pretty high pressure, actually. Uh, landing weight's fine. Uh, so condition is dry. Cat config is 1. No anti-ice. Reverses are fine. Spoilers. Auto brake, uh, 2. I will hide that. Calculate it. Send the output. See you later. All done.
and then over here <coughs> we can accept it like so although it's interesting isn't it how all of the v ref speeds have just died on us but as long as we have the the last one i don't really care right um that's everything so top of descent is in 78 miles uh landing with 7.5 tons good on fuel good on everything really uh, we can set the auto brake to two and we'll transfer this to hpa like that once and also we will um put the minima in as well to barrow come on i'm getting trolled there it is so I'll just stick it to 400 feet there it is and that's everything we are homeward bound in our mighty steed Okay, so we are well into the descent, just approaching the overhead of Goodwood, Golf Whiskey Charlie, and uh, we will continue descent to uh, flight level 80 for the moment. English countryside, kind of. I realised, um, I did the P3D video the other week about the settings. I had one of the... Uh, the shadows for the sim objects um, unchecked so I didn't have any shadows on, on anything uh, and for some reason it classes the trees as a sim object so now I've turned the shadows back on uh, I actually have shadows and everything looks great before it looked very bland on the ground so uh, if you watch that video just uh, uh, go to the, the shadow settings in P3D and, and just check the sim objects one as well it's there's only one column there's no cast and receive it's just it's just one side it's on the left uh right anyway so we got about 20 miles to run until holly and then from there we'll vector ourselves so let me just do uh the checklists of which we don't need to do yet because we're not under transition level So everything is just good as it is, really. I've still got ultimate traffic on, so the aircraft are probably going to be landing on the wrong runway because that's what they really like to do. So I might just toggle that off as we get to um, as we get towards uh, the uh, the final approach. So the plan is to leave Holly on a sort of northeasterly heading. I mean, we could just let it follow it all the way. And there's nothing wrong with that either. It's up to you really what you do. But it's going to try and turn us holly, then willow, and then enter the hold, which is what we don't want it to do. So uh, instead, I'm going to grab Mayfield, and I'm going to put it where willow is, like this. And then you'll see we'll just get a straight left after... Uh, after Holly, and the problem is now because there's no level restriction at Holly, 
is now trying to nose dive us towards it. So let's fix that. There you go. It's much better. Uh, Mayfield at 4,000. I mean, I don't know why it has this restraint in. It's just, it seems far too high. If you're being self vectored, I'm going to change it to like 5,500. Uh, there you go. Not that we're going to use that anyway, but whatever. Okay. In it, ref. Oh, the speeds have put themselves in now. That's good. ILS automatically is tuned, you can see in the top left of the PFD. So we're 17 point something miles away. But that's not accurate. Well, I mean, it's accurate in relativity to where we are from the actual beacon, but not anywhere in relativity to uh, track miles, if you will. I reckon from here we probably got about 35 miles, 40 miles to go. Maybe just under. Depends how quickly I turn base. There's someone on TCAS at uh, 3,000 feet below us. And of course, the direction of which they're in is covered by cloud. Such is life. Yeah, completely covered. All right, so we're under 10K, uh, so we can turn on the landing lights. I'll put the turn off lights on as well. Um, the nose light, well, the gears up, so I don't see the point of putting the nose light on. Oh, they're actually climbing into us, that's fun. Let's see if we can spot them. Minus six, minus five, and that's three, so they're about six miles in this direction. Reset this down to uh, 3,000 feet. Oh no, it's they're turning. Oh, they wow, they outclimbed as quick. The hell? Oh, there they are. Okay, let's see what it is. It is a easy jet A320 on the old like white livery. Cool. Pressure is 1034, so we'll set that. And there's someone else on TCAS, off to our left now, 2,000 feet below us. I guess these are just all the departures, so the AI traffic is actually using the right runway. It's using the, uh, the westerly runway. There it is. Look at that. Damn, that thing climbed high, or fast, even. Okay, so now we've got someone 300 feet from the left of us somewhere. I'm hoping we see them, because that is going to be... Oh, no, they're, they're climbing again so fast. Well, we will see them. Somewhere up there. He says, uh, 2,000 feet now. Damn, they really are. Okay, found. And that is a... Oh, wow, this is an EasyJet-sponsored stream, isn't it? There's another one. Oh, I suppose Gatwick is EasyJet Central. Uh, there is Gatwick on the left of us. Everything looks to be good. Might as well keep the speed at 250 for now. We'll slow us down a little bit later on. It's so strange because I am. Um, I. Let me just do the approach of this quickly. I just started uh, learning to fly again after 10 years, 
literally 10 years of not being in a plane. Um, and uh, using the sim now versus how I used to use it, I don't know, it, it, it's different, it feels different. I guess when you train to fly even small planes, you have to, or you're trained to do it in a certain way. Um, and if you were not used to it, then the way you use the sim becomes different as well. My, uh, let's just say my attention span is, is greatly uh, increased. I'm looking at more than just what I used to look at, which is, I guess one day maybe I'll do like a video on, on how I see it different. But uh, going from flying a Cherokee to flying this is just the most bizarre thing in the space of a day. So it's trying to do 198 knots, which I don't know why, like I hard code the speed and it still tries to, oh, it's trying to slow to flat one. Oh no, cause no, it, it, that's wrong. It would be trying to slow to min clean, not flat one. Still don't think they've quite got this right as far as the systems go, but whatever. Anyway, we're, uh, we're good as far as altitude goes. We're a little bit fast. But what's going to happen is it's going to dip below the glide and then we're going to trade the altitude for speed. So we'll let it go further down and then in about 200 feet I'm going to hit flight level change and I'm going to wind the speed all the way back. About there. And now you'll see the nose will pitch up and apparently the engines will spool. That's interesting. Look at this. Well, <laughs> that is definitely not supposed to happen. So we're gonna have to go heading select just for a moment to fix this, because otherwise I'm gonna have to put some speed brake out now. That was crazy. Um, what is it doing? It's on speed mode. Why is it not on flight mode? I'll tell you what, let's just use a VS. So we'll do like 500 feet a minute and then we'll spin it in. Yeah, that should not have happened. That should have picked the speed that was set in the window and then used flight level change for that, that speed, but it didn't do that. I'm also gonna whack the turn coordinator thing to max, otherwise we're gonna go straight through the localizer. We're still gonna go straight through the localizer regardless. Getting spiced. Two, three, zero degrees. That'll do. Speed can continue to come further down. And we'll go flat one. Now it's just a case of slowing it as best we can before we get on the localizer. And then flat five. arm the localizer. I'm going to go to 2,000 feet actually because I don't trust this at all. I'll just continue slowing it down. 170. We'll go flat 15. A bit more VS. Come on plane. You can do it. There we go. And that should give us a glide as well, which it did. Perfect. Eight miles to go. 2500. Beautiful. Looks so nice. That in itself is a thumbnail. God damn it, that looks so good. Okay, speed brake armed. And the, uh, actually what's the miles? Still got seven miles to run yet, so. We'll reduce to 160. And the approach speed's gonna be 141. We can turn the EFB off, we don't need that. And go external view, gear down. that for a view. Let's 
Sweet. Okay, that's five miles to run, so we'll go all the flaps and 141 on the speed. Damn, this wheel thing is annoying. And we'll put the nose light on. Cool. Look at the flaps. Everything looks good. We can run the landing checklist, which is here. It's all green. And then back to the CDU. Missed approach altitude is 3,000 feet, so we'll whack that in. And we have a bottle of orange juice in the way of my joystick, so that needs to go. And my coffee cup. The amount of times I've knocked things over trying to land planes is actually not even funny. Okay. One thousand. My aircraft. Now, one of the things I like about the 7A, uh, or more specifically the quality wing 7A, is the handling of it. I, the flight model, I mean, okay, there's always going to be an argument of, oh, it doesn't handle like the real thing. I have never flown a 787 in real life, so I have no bloody idea if it handles like the real thing. All I'll say is, it's very smooth to fly. It doesn't drop out the sky, it's not hard to handle. Like, very minimalistic inputs gets you where you want to go. The only thing I will say is that for some reason, if I pull back on the stick, it feels like it doesn't want to do it. And the only way I can get a, a decent enough pitch is if I, like, yank it all the way back. And it almost acts like a fly-by-wire then and sort of resets itself. It's really hard to explain unless you've actually flown it. But still, as long as you understand that that's the behavior, then it's easy. Looking good. Approaching minimums. Minimums. Continue. Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Touchdown. Bit of left rudder. Idle reverse. There's 80. 70. 60. Reverses in. Manual braking. And there it is. Welcome to Gatters. Look at that for a wing. What a beast. That and it's like, I always struggle because I don't know what to use as a thumbnail. Because there's just so many nice angles of this plane. I don't struggle with, with other, like the NG and stuff like that. The texturing isn't that great, so I don't really care about trying to get nice angles, but the texturing in this thing is fantastic. Right, okay, so we're going to the north terminal. So first thing, strobes off, taxi lights on, and turn off the landing lights. And we can bring in the flaps and don the speed brakes. Uh, we'll turn the weather off, and we will squawk standby. I can't remember if they want you to do that again. We call not, it doesn't really make a difference because there's no ATC. <clears throat> Excuse me, turn right onto Taxiway Juliet. And uh, that's us all the way down to the turn for Quebec, Romeo, I think it is actually not Quebec. Um, we can turn on the APU. So that was 8 hours 40 minutes that flight took. You know what? I'm actually impressed. Because PFPX told me it was going to take 10 hours and 50. So, that's a lie. Or oh, 10 hours and 40. I can't remember. It's at the start of the video. 33 knots down the taxiway. Sue me. A 
got told as well, speaking of flying IRL, you know all of these, uh, the people in the comments that you see going, oh, you taxi too fast, or Ryan, no taxi, hue, 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 lizard face, whatever that meme is. Um, apparently, you should only taxi at walking speed. Who knew? Now, I don't know if that just applies to like small planes, like GA planes, or whether that's like a, a thing for every plane. If it is for every plane, then basically every flight I went on last year was speeding because there is absolutely no way you would have kept up with that thing walking or kept up with any of them walking. Oh look, there's a fellow 787. Right, so this is the left onto Romeo. Is it A380? Good old Emirates. Seems to just infiltrate every airport in the world. And then we'll, we'll follow this around to the right. USB is just almost disconnected then. That was awkward. And we will find ourselves a suitable gate up the north side. Uh, where shall we go? 65. What a great selection of ground handling. Oh, please tell me I've not put it on a remote stand. I actually have. Oh, well. You know what, I'm going to change that, because there's no way I'm putting it on the remote stand. Um, apparently gate 64 is assigned to another... Nah, what is going on? Maybe there's going to be... Okay, apparently gate 68 is too small. Wait, what is this gate... No, that's not happening. I'm just going to revoke parking services. I'm going to park where I want. GSX, biggest spice lord ever. 554. Five, oh, okay. Well, actually. Five, six, eight. Where's that? Oh, here we go. That'll do. Right, turn off lights off, taxi light off. How do I get onto this stand? I'm so confused right now. Oh, it's okay, I see, I see. British Airways 777, very nice. Right, where's the actual stand? Ooh, no, 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 it's the, I've, oh, God damn it. Oh, okay, well, everything is disconnecting. This is awkward. Can you hear the sound dropping out? Are we dead? My my pedals have uh, have died. And I don't know why. Can you hear it? It's going crazy. Um well, this is awkward. Let me just see if I can make the pedals work again. Wait, I don't have any throttle input anymore. Let me uh, just use the F keys. He says, I actually can't use anything. You know what? <laughs> oh well. That'll do. That was odd. That was really odd. I don't know why they just they just froze like that.
Here comes the jetway. Okay, so we can plug in the external power. We can open up the cargo doors. And then we can turn off the hydraulics, turn off the fuel pumps, turn off everything because that was a meme. Uh, beacon light off, seat belts off, everything off. And then we can file with Project Flight. Like so. Here it is. Landing rate minus 129. Very good. There's another one in the logbook. Apparently it took me 23 hours. Yeah, I need to fix that. And there it is. The 787. Gatwick to... Sorry, Cancun to Gatwick. Bringing it back from the... Uh, the stream I did, I love, honestly, like, the software that we have to put up with in this, in this industry is just incredible. Absolutely incredible. Like, hello everybody, if you'd like to disembark the aircraft via the last exit on the left-hand side, you will be forced to slide down a baggage belt. Thank you for flying with GSX. Like, that's, that's how ridiculous it is. Also, quality wings. Can you please add some chocks to your planes? That's all I care about now. I mean, I care about a few other things as well, but I would like some chocks too. Anyway, this video is probably like 900 hours long, so sorry for wasting your time. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I was going to split this into two, and I realized it's probably a bad idea because I don't have the time to do that. So I'm just going to make it one long one and deal with the computer rendering and uploading it while I'm out and about flying in real life. I've got like four flights to do this week, IRL, so that's pretty cool. Um, if you have any suggestions for onward videos, please let me know, because as I said a million times in other videos, my creativity is basically none, so sometimes I'll sit down and I'll want to record something and then I won't know what to record. Uh, it kind of goes around in circles. Uh, but I'm definitely going to be doing some real-world flying videos. I'm super excited. I actually just got a delivery today from Amazon of a uh, splitter for the ATC audio and a... Um, I don't even know the name of it. The thing that you plug the audio into so you can record just the audio track. I got one of them. I've got a GoPro coming and some other random stuff which will allow me to uh, make real-life aviation content. So I'm pretty hyped about that. Uh, but yeah. I thank you all for watching, and until the next time, take care, and ta-ra for now.